Saw have become a team that we've started to hear more and more often in 2024. After making the Copenhagen Major and now making it into the IEM Cologne playoffs, these guys are a scary team to play against. Saw have become one of the most dominant nuke teams in EU and have beaten both G2 and the Mongols convincingly on this map. So let's take a deep dive specifically in their T side to see exactly what they're doing to have such strong leads over tier one teams. Starting off, we have a T side pistol round where Saw performs a perfect A fake into a ramp rush. Ruin goes ahead and nades door, smokes mini, and flashes onto A, while Story goes onto T roof and Molly's back site and throws an additional two flashes. While the utility is being chambered onto site, the rest of them are heading towards ramp. This utility left ramp completely open and had Malbs rotate all the way into halls so they could have a quick rotate onto A. This gave Saw a nearly completely open site to work with and they won their duels during the retake which won them the round. Now heading into round 2, Saw is going into an anti-eco against G2. Saw began the round by throwing two truck smokes outside and sending Muterus to run down secret with a MAC-10 while the rest of the team holds down lobby in case of any sort of pushes. Muterus makes contact with Nico and draws a smoke in secret and then he decides to go back outside instead of actually taking the fight. Muterus making contact causes Malbs to leave ramp on a perfect timing for the others. Saw fully contact out ramp while Muterus returns to the lobby from outside to cut off any sort of flank that G2 may have planned. And with almost a completely open B site, Saw execute a near perfect round into the anti-eco. Now let's take a look at round 5, one of the first full buy rounds into the game. Saw begin the round with basic default utility such as a door nade, a vent lurk smoke, and a top hut molly, and then they leave Roman lurking lobby while the other four are working outside and attempt to yard wrap. They then decide to throw this really nice utility set that I think a lot more teams should use that includes a mini smoke, a locker smoke, yard flash, as well as a molly into secret. Because of this utility, they are able to get the pick onto Nico, and from here they have a significant amount of space taken from G2. The outside players are able to stall and hold angles while they let Roman activate from Squeaky, and he's able to clear out A site and make it a super easy round for Saw. But a question I had when watching this round is why did G2 actually leave A site completely empty? Well. Let's take a look. Malb started the round with some pretty early info towards Trophy and Ramp. Monacy was able to double up with him and they were able to get into deep lobby, kind of into that radio area, clearing the possibility of there being any sort of AX cute from Saw from lobby. While this is happening from the Ramp players, Snacks drops down vent shortly after Nico dies to hopefully catch the secret player, but for whatever reason, Hunter decides to drop as well. While Monacy and Malbs did have quite a lot of info, they didn't clear Squeaky, and with Nico being dead outside, Saw had multiple plays that they could have made. To me, it looks like Snacks made the decision to gamble that Saw was going to finish B, but it simply wasn't the case. But let me know in the comments why you think G2 were so convinced that Saw weren't going A, and left a completely free site for them. Going into round 7, throughout the match so far, Saw have mainly stuck to a relatively slow default with a lot of outside pressure, but when it came to round 7, they completely switched up the pace of the game. They begin the round with the same truck smokes using the anti-eco, and Muterus follows along them as normal. However, Udrix books it onto top mini and instantly drops into mini, catching Hunter completely off guard. After killing Hunter, Story, and Eros Dase are ready to pop out of Hut, and Roman lurks out of the vent smoke where Monacy simply isn't expecting him. And during all of this happening on A's site, Muterus is being a pest outside, keeping Nico occupied, and while Nico does win the 1v3 this round, as he is Nico, time runs out and Saw are able to secure another round. I believe that this was the round where G2 really started to be shooken up. Saw went from a slower, more methodical default into a complete bum rush of the A-bomb site. Now heading into round 8, Saw are continuing with this fast change of pace and head straight into the round with a fast A execute, and it really wasn't anything fancy, but it worked. Muterus throws his default outside cross smokes and then goes to the molly top hut, while Roman nades the doors and throws the vent lurk smoke. Story flashes Roman out of the smoke and completely blinds Hunter, giving Roman the free kill. All this while the other two players are popping out of hut with flashes from Muterus, blinding Snacks who is sitting back site. This was a very simple, yet extremely effective A-execute that kept up with their fast change of pace. We've been starting to see more and more teams use the vent lurk smoke as a way to get close and personal with CTs on nuke, and in this case, it worked perfectly. Heading into round 9, when you think that Saw couldn't change the pace even more, they do the unthinkable. Saw immediately send 3 down vent with bomb without any outside utility. To perform this, they throw the vent lurk smoke from spawn, a top hut molly, double flashes into mini, as well as a grenade. Story anchored outside with the op on Twinkie, while the other three got to work on B site after dropping down vent. 
Before G2 could even think about what just happened, Saw had completely taken B site and G2 had no option but to save. When watching this round live, it was hilarious to watch because three instant diving vent on a full buy is not something that you see every day. Overall, in the match against G2, Saw were not letting go of the momentum. Starting the half with a slow default, keeping G2 comfortable just before switching everything up completely. G2 was completely shocked and couldn't adapt to what they were doing, which was an absolute masterclass from Saw. Now heading into the game against the Mongols, they didn't have as strong of a T side, but they had some really cool plays that they pulled off. In the first full buy round against the Mongols, Saw pulls out another great play from the strap book. They default the round with three outside smokes and event lurk smoke, nothing too out of the ordinary. However, before the Mongols can even realize what is happening, Saw is already fully executing onto the A site from Lobby. Saw used an extremely good set of utility from both Story and Muterus. Muterus is balling top hut and then flashes Roman out of the vent lurk smoke while Story double flashes and Molly's back sight. This is perfectly executed by Saw and they were able to catch the Mongols off guard by the use of their default outside smokes. In round 11, Saw is seen in a tough position as they have Galils and a MAC-10, however they pull off this really cool play using as Erzdase as a bait to run through the vent lurk smoke while the other two are actually dropping down vent. The vent players are able to take the B space before the Mongols even realized that that was a bait all along, and Muterus and Story were able to backstab through ramp, which is another really cool extremity play pulled off by Saw. From the over 24 T side rounds that I watched from Saw over the last two days, I can confidently say that these guys have an extremely deep playbook. While many argue that having too many plays can be a bad thing, I think it really works wonders for Saw. They are able to adapt on the fly and change the pace of the game consistently, which continues to keep their opponents on their toes. Saw is an extremely fun team to watch, no doubt, especially on this map, so I'm super excited to see what they can do in the IM Cologne playoffs, and hopefully we get to see some more nuke action from them. But anyways guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this analysis on Saw's T-side on nuke. They've been absolutely dominating recently, and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and go check out my other video on how the Mongols completely upset against Spirit just over a few days ago.